until you can walk out of the gym, you're good. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, this, uh, discomfort, I think a lot of people avoid discomfort. I think it's an important part of growth, you know, whether it's discomfort you know, on the job, trying new things, starting a new business venture, like you're talking about what you're doing, um, doing a new workout. You know, several months ago, I started doing jujitsu. I'm not a, I'm not new to martial arts, but I'm new to jujitsu. I did karate when I was younger. I miss that discipline. I miss that brotherhood, that connection with other people. But at 53 years old, people are like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, you're rolling around the floor with these 20 year olds. I'm like, well, why not try something new? I always wanted to try it, right? I love it. It's, it's a great workout. It's different. Yeah, you get, sometimes with working out, you get caught in a rut, um, especially with COVID. I wasn't really going to the gym. I'm training in my garage. I like to be around people. This is a great way to do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. But it's important to put, make yourself uncomfortable sometimes. There's, you can't really grow if, you, if, you, if everything's always easy and comfortable for you. But that's in life in general. I think it's, it's really important to, to do that. And you starting a new venture, you're definitely stepping out of your comfort zone. You used to working a job, getting a steady income. You know how much you're making every week. You know, you have a family to support. And here you are stepping out of that but you, you're going to turn it into something big i'm sure um, but it, it's going to take time and you're going to be uncomfortable and for me one of the reasons why i'm i wouldn't say addicted to it but so dependent on it is because i i'd suffered with depression and anxiety my whole life so i use that as kind of like you said it's a religion i find it's like my medication <laughs> you know, after a good workout i'm calm i feel good but I've always turned to, and when I was younger, I had sports. Obviously, you can't do that when you're older. Um, so now I have other things that I rely on to, to help me better manage it. You know, it's not a, you can't use that as a crutch or an excuse to say, oh, I'm kind of down today. I'm, I'm just going to sit around and do nothing. You know, your health suffers for it, your physical health. But if you're not mentally strong, it's, it's a challenge. Look, I get up sometimes. I'm like, you know, I don't feel like working out today, right? You can't, you can't give into it. You just got to push through. And, you know, for someone who has mental health issues, it's even harder. That's why when I hear people who, who, you know, don't have those issues making excuses for, I don't have time to work out. My shoulder hurts. I got two torn labrums, two rotator cuff tears. I had back surgery when I was 20. I had knee surgery when, in, in 2007. It's not an excuse. Either is age. I'm 53 years old. I mean, but people will find the excuse because they avoid discomfort. That's just what they do. Or some people are just not disciplined to, to be uh, consistent with it. You know, the new year is coming. Oh, I'm going to go join the gym. And two weeks later, they're done. You know, I just, you know, it should be a priority because, you know, if you don't have your health, what do you have? You, know, you can have all the money in the world. But if you're going to spend all that money to try and buy back your health when you're older, What's the point, right? You're right, Brian. You know, um, it was through it was through the job that I came to confront that I couldn't cope. I couldn't cope with what I defined as failure, and so a lot of a lot of things that came out of COVID for me were was from the reflection of wh why why did I get into these bad habits of thinking a certain way, and everything went back to just. An early, an early age, I would just start putting myself down. I, I really talked to myself in a negative way to push myself. Like, come on, man, come on, don't suck, do better. Like, and so that repetitive pattern of, of, of never really encouraging myself. And then I, I used to think this was just hokey pokey. Like, I mean, I'll meditate, I'll pray, I'll, I'll, I'll get calm, but inside the storm was always fierce and it was always mm -hmm. like ready to bring me down. I would, I would celebrate others. Someone was down, one of my buddies or even a colleague, if they were struggling, boy, I was really good at being there for them. But then when it came to being there for me, I always let myself down. And then, then when I really needed to be there for myself during COVID, recognizing Brian, how inferior I am behind a screen. Like I had to make all these calls scientifically based dealing with, you know, real experts in their field. And I'm looking at my face and the whole time I'm thinking a million things being hypercritical of my, 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 my facial movements. And what are you doing? Like, why do you do that? What's, and then I'm, and I, I just lost all, I lost all grasp of what I actually do, which is connect to people mm -hmm. and understand. And like the screen became a, a, 
a trap. I couldn't, I couldn't escape it. And um, I was having a tough time moving commercially anything that I was selling because it's a very limited profile and um, it wasn't ideal for immunity. So it was, a, a, it was a convergence, but this is where it, this is where I had an opportunity and I probably had many opportunities and I, I, I may have not seized them, but I had an opportunity to break the pattern of, of, of self-defeating thought when I was up at three in the morning on May 5th or something, May 6th, May 4th, something like that, um, beginning of May. And, and, and I just was empty. I had just emptiness inside me and I'm in front of my computer and I'm trying to work. I'm trying to get a sale at three in the morning as if what I'm going to do right now is going to trigger <laughs> anything. And the hopelessness behind my, my optimism crushed me. It was like inside I knew this is literally not worth it, but you're still working like a dog to do it only to disappoint yourself. Uday, you love this. You love kicking yourself. And I had to break that habit. I said, I need, I need, to, I need to be good at something new. Mm -hmm. I sent a message to the F45 guy that down the street, he opened up a studio and he'd been trying to get me in. I'd, well, I'd gone in there just to like check it out. I never went in for a trial. And I said, hey man, if I don't change anything right now, I'm done. I don't know if I come back from this. I'm at, I'm at rock bottom. And from that day, what has started is, is, is this, is this journey. And it was breaking that pattern. And I was just lucky, man. I was just really lucky that, you know, I have a supportive family and I have a lot of people around me. So maybe my spiral wasn't as violent as maybe others, yeah. but it's, it's a very, very sensitive subject to me. When you tell me very openly and candidly that you've battled mental health challenges, you know, that that's just something that when we were younger, we weren't allowed to ever even say, man, like, you know, you, you got, and I, you know, you know, whether you're in sales, whether you're in the gym, whether you, but being, being men, we, 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 we just, we don't, we don't, we're not allowed to be weak. And then I realized I was like, I'm weak in the gym and I get stronger. <laughs> I keep going back to the gym and I get stronger. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's okay to be weak. Just don't, don't stay weak. Get stronger. Yeah, I mean it's true, especially in the, I grew up in a pretty tough neighborhood in Brooklyn. You know, you didn't talk about your feelings. You know, my dad grew up during the depression. He was a World War II veteran. You just didn't really talk about feelings. I didn't really understand. You know, you don't really understand what you, as a kid, that you don't understand depression. My mother suffered from it terribly. So I had some idea what it was. I didn't, you know, I would look at other people, other kids like to having such a great time. I never felt that. I never had the ability to really enjoy myself that much. So I had a feeling something was wrong, but didn't recognize it till later on. But, you know, seeing therapists never helped me. Um, medication didn't help me. Really just being active. It, it was to me the best thing. And like you said, being positive, because the, the words you tell yourself mean a lot. If you keep you know, throwing negative words into your head, that's the way you're going to live. Right? And if you surround yourself with negative people, it's the same thing. If you have good support, people who are encouraging and not negative, it helps a lot. Um, but still, it's it's you that has to do the work. You know, these therapists would go back to your childhood, of course. Oh, you know, this happened to you. I'm like, okay, and I'm not going to sit here and blame my mother for my issues. I'm a grown man. I got to step up and figure out how am I going to help myself to feel better. And, you know, thinking back, I always, sports, I always felt that the competition I loved, I loved the, the physical. I always liked, I played hockey and football. So I liked the contact sports. Um, so for me, and then I did martial arts when I was younger, it was, that was like my outlet, right? So it kind of helped me get through that. And, you know, but in, in a neighborhood where, you know, <laughs> you have tough guys walking around, you're not walking around saying, oh, I'm feeling depressed. No, no one, like you said, talked about it back then. But now, you know, I, I've opened up to a lot of people and me being honest, even here at, at, at work, um, people come to me on the side because a lot of people, you know, they suffer in silence with mental health, unfortunately. They don't get the help they need. Sometimes, you know, people don't see light at the end of the tunnel and doesn't end well. Um, see it with veterans, you know, killing themselves, coming back from war, not having the support that they need. Um, you know, athletes with traumatic brain injury, not getting the support they need. It happens all the time, but you know, it's really, you gotta have that support system and that positive thinking and you have to have an outlet. You have to have, you have to figure out what makes you feel good that sometimes it's trial and error, you know, and for you, you're in a good place now, right? You figured out what's best for you. But to me, physical health and mental health go together. Yeah, They really do. If you're not going to feel great, if your body is not strong and fit, it just, 
they really go together. And, and, it, and it's, the, it's the whole package. It's eating healthy. It's getting enough sleep. A lot of people, you know, they think they're tough because they're functioning on four or five hours sleep. They're not really functioning well. They think they are. They don't realize there's so much research around sleep deprivation and how it increases risk for diabetes, heart disease, depression, anxiety, all of those things. And, right. you know, especially with men, oh, you know, I got to work 18 hours a day. I want to fatten up my bank account. I want to buy a house, a new car. All right. But if you're going to sacrifice your health, does it make any sense to do that? God bless you. You know, for you, if that's what makes you happy, good for you. Um, but my mental and physical health are, are my priorities. I have a family to take care of. Yeah. You know, if you're not good mentally and you're not healthy physically, I don't know what kind of, what use are you going to be to your family? With the advancements in formulations, like you have such good supplements out there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's actually a tragedy if you're using those supplements. This is the thing that I got out of the physical fitness, just something simple as protein. Okay. When I pro what protein does for me right now is so different than what it could have done for me before when I was not nearly as active as I am right now mm -hmm. and seeing it being able to do what it needs to do. Otherwise my body's not going to need it and it's not going to use it, or it's just going to become something else. And you start looking at these other categories, nootropics and you know, the cognitive space. And you look at, you know um, you know, even if you look at um, let's say, gen let's say you have genetic predisposition to cholesterol. And so you're in good shape, but you maybe still have, I know some people that actually have high cholesterol and they're in great shape. Um, right here. There you go. I mean, so, and then I know some people that are out of shape, that got great cholesterol. So I, <laughs> some of this stuff doesn't make any sense, but when you, when you give your body a chance to actually use these supplements that can maybe elevate you to another place, you know, mm -hmm. not that now our job becomes more interesting. You know, when you have an informed consumer, when you're dealing with people that are like looking, you know, not just to take it because, hey, I, I got to take vitamin D because some guy said I got to take vitamin D. Let me just take any vitamin D. You don't even know what your vitamin D level is. Yeah. Like we got to have an informed consumer. And like I, I feel very responsible in my own little sphere of influence where I have contract manufacturers and some brands and being able to even do a podcast and then reach an audience and just speak about the, the importance of consumers really knowing what they're putting in their body and why they're putting it in their body. That's why you're formulating what you're formulating. I think that the, the space is very confusing to most people. And, and that has a lot to do with, there's so much misinformation. There's so much misinformation about nutrition in general. Um, there's so much misinformation about fitness. You know, you have people who really aren't qualified to give out advice freely going on social media and posting things with, little to no scientific evidence to support it. Look, it's a free country, but to me, if, if what you're saying might put people at risk, I don't, I don't really appreciate, I don't believe that should be, you know, social media gets screened and things get removed for so many reasons. But when it comes to stuff like that, they, they just leave it up there. You know, where are the fact checkers on all the inaccuracies about the nutrition and the science? It's just not there. But if you say something wrong about what your opinion is about a vaccine or whatever is going on today, um, it's quickly removed, <laughs> which is yeah, kind of sure. crazy because there, there is so much misinformation. And, you know, even with supplements, I've been in the industry a long time. I've been in the nutrition field since the 90s. I've spent time in academia. And the thing that people believe to be true about nutrition just goes to show you how much misinformation there is. For one, people think the supplement industry isn't regulated, which we both know is a joke. Now, okay. If you're not following the regulations, which you know there are some companies that don't, and they just sell products that aren't tested, they're putting in meaningless amounts of ingredients and making bold claims that they have absolutely no scientific evidence to support. But for players like us, Vitamin Shop, and a lot of brands um, that are uh, products that are sold, people are doing the right thing. They're they're following GMPs when they manufacture products. They're testing their products. They are not misleading people to believe things. The product the product will do something that it won't. Um, and again, we're talking supplements, right? They're, right? they're designed to supplement a healthy lifestyle. They're not going to replace eating healthy, exercise, and sleeping good, but they can definitely be of benefit. You mentioned you know, certain things, especially for mental health. Omega-3 fatty acids are very beneficial. There are some herbs that can be beneficial. But again, if you don't have all those other things in place, it, it's kind of like people reaching for medication 
you know, you go to a doctor and tell the doctor you're having a lot of stomach issues. I got reflux. I got heartburn. I'm constipated. He's not going to talk to you about nutrition. He's going right. to give you something to make for the bathroom. He's going to give you something to help with your heartburn. If he would just kind of dig a little deeper and say, hey, you need to change your diet a little bit. You probably feel better. But, you know, people want the quick fix. And, you know, sometimes I see supplements being sold that way. Like, you know, don't worry about changing your lifestyle. Just take this. Now, the reputable companies don't market products like that. Um, but look, it's unfortunate. There's a lot of misinformation. Supplements can be really beneficial. And I, I hate when, when, when I hear people and even physicians saying, you can get all the nutrients you need from your diet. Well, the data we have shows that most people don't come close to meeting their daily requirements for many nutrients. Right. And even... Even the most, um, even the most, um, the person who is most well-intentioned, they feel like they're eating well, and you know their diet consists of mostly whole foods. You know, it's hard to get all the nutrients you need, and you know the daily values they suggest are really the minimum amount to get optimal amounts. You'd have to eat a lot of calories, um, a lot of food, eat often, and frankly, people have a hard time doing that. That's right. <laughs> We have, uh, we have a, an obesity rate that continues to grow, type 2 diabetes in teenagers, which, you know, years ago, it was considered, it was called adult onset diabetes because you really didn't see that in, in kids. Now you're seeing it, children are very young age because they're, they're inactive and they're eating unhealthy. Um, but, you know, you got, you got to look at the whole lifestyle. And I think it all comes together. Supplements do have a place, but they can't replace healthy eating, exercise, sleeping well managing your stress, all the things that we're talking about. Your, your, brain, your brain has to live somewhere. It may as well be in a healthy body. Yes. But, you know, our system is not set up for what you're talking about. You know, there, know. There's, little, there's little education on nutrition. I mean, I taught nutrition in college for students who, um, I, I did teach elective courses, but most of them were nutrition majors. That was the field they were going into. Um, they're, they're, the food... The places where you should get the healthiest food, like schools and hospitals, usually have the worst quality food. And, it, you know, people make a joke out of it, right? I think, you know, if you go back 40, 50 years ago, there wasn't access to all the information you have now. You have so many people, so much good, credible information. I think it's just a matter of weeding through the BS and people don't know, like, what the good resources are. You know, they're, they're on TV listening to people who are just hyping up a product or a, a new diet, a new book. But I think for most people, they understand what a healthy food is. It, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't think I, I don't think that's that difficult. You know, when you when you're walking around the supermarket, you know what food is good, right? I mean, it, it gets a little bit more of a challenge when it's when you're comparing food in a package, right? But everyone knows fruits and vegetables, you know, lean meat, chicken, all the things that when you go around the outside of the grocery store, basically things that can go bad, you know. If, 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 if a piece of uh, like a Twinkie, you can keep it in your car for like two years and it doesn't go bad. If the bacteria don't want it, your body, it's not going to be of any benefit to your body. I think most people have a, I think it's common sense of what a healthy food is. Now, as far as how much of it, you, you know, you can even overeat healthy food, right? You still have to watch how much of it you eat, like everything in moderation. You can, you, you can even get sick from drinking too much water, right? Something called hyponatremia where you're, sodium levels drop too high. You can get very sick from that. So you can overdo anything healthy. So I think moderation is key. Eating real food as close to nature as possible. It's not that complicated. I know there's tons of diets out there, diet books, people, you know, these gurus who, you know, want you to follow their way of thinking. There's no one way of eating. You know, some people do great on a keto diet. Some don't. Some people can do the intermittent fasting. Some people can't go, you know, 16, 17 hours without eating. You know, I think we listen to our body. If you, if you wake up in the morning, you're hungry, eat something, right? It shouldn't be a donut. <laughs> um, if you're not hungry, don't eat. Wait till later in the day. But to intentionally not eat, that doesn't work for a lot of people. You know, a, a, a low-carb diet, a high-protein diet, whatever it is, you know, there's tons of that stuff out there. Sure. And there's always new stuff coming out. And that's where the money is, unfortunately. There's no money in common sense. Eat real food as close to nature as possible in moderation, exercise, sleep well, and supplement as necessary. Can I make money saying that? No, <laughs> not really. 
Um, so that's the challenge. And, you know, with in, in medical school, you know, the person who you're relying on for your health care, your physician, you know, you're going there when you're sick. You know, I don't really go to doctors. I get my annual checkup. If I'm a little under the weather, I'm not running to a doctor. But there's a lot of people who depend on doctors to give them the right advice. Right. Unfortunately, and it's not their fault, the, the healthcare system incentivizes treatment of disease, not health. So there's no money in, in keeping people healthy. There just isn't. So when you go to a doctor, if you don't walk out of there with a prescription, whether it's to a specialist or for a drug, do you feel like you got any value out of it? Probably not, right? No one wants to leave the doctor with nothing <laughs> unless you're just going for a checkup. So that there's no training in preventive health care. I think more, more and more medical schools are starting to incorporate that, but they spend so much time. You know, I have friends who are physicians, so much time on learning about diseases and symptoms and medications, and it's a lot of work. It is. So to squeeze nutrition in there, I, mean, I think it's important, but it's just not the way the system is set up. We we have more of a disease management system than a healthcare system. It's just the way it is. And it's unfortunate. Um, I think last year was a wake up call for a lot of people who were kind of, I know at the vitamin shop, we were seeing sales of things like vitamin D, zinc, even there were doctors recommending it during the whole, you know, what was going on to just support a healthy immune system. And studies that came out show that people with higher vitamin D levels ended up pairing better. Does that prove a cause and effect relationship? No, but you know, if you can, it's easy to keep your vitamin D levels up, right? It's not complicated. It's inexpensive. And if it can help, why not? There's no side effects to taking small amounts of vitamin D, making sure you check your levels with your physician. But last year was a wake up call for a lot of people who realized, Hey, it's not just diabetes, cancer, heart disease, you know, certain cancers that are lifestyle related. Now I can, if I'm not healthy and have underlying conditions, I can die from a virus. So I think a lot of people got really scared, you know, because you know, the, a lot of people who got very sick and died had some underlying condition. That doesn't mean no healthy people, <laughs> uh, no healthy people died or got very sick. Of course, there were. I think it was a much smaller percentage, you know, and people were relying on, well, you know, we got the vaccine, we're good. But, you know, even the, the companies that came out with the vaccine, they, they never said you can't get the virus if you're vaccinated. But right. it's, there's a really good chance you'll survive. You won't end up in the emergency. I mean, that's the goal, right? You don't want to end up in the emergency room on a ventilator because once you're there, the risk of you dying goes up dramatically. So right. if with the vaccine, you know, should free country, free choice, whatever you do, but it, it was never to stop you from getting it, right? Yeah, the, just the really to minimize the damage, you know, the collateral damage that can occur when you have a virus. The inflammation, look, you get the flu. There's a lot of inflammation in the body that comes from your immune response. Right. Unfortunately, with COVID, that, that, that inflammatory response, they call the cytokine storm, really caused a lot of damage in the lungs. And I think that's where the issue was. So right. we haven't seen a virus like this in a long time. But again, I think people got nervous. They're like, wow, you know, I got to get healthy now. <laughs> so they think they got to turn yeah. around. And look, that's great. If, if that got them on the path, unfortunately, some people need a scare like that. Sure. To, to make changes. And that's, that's good. That's fine. You know, they went through whatever they went through. Now they, they got their, 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 their life in order and they're eating healthy and they're, they're conscious of, you know, getting up and exercising every day, getting out and getting sun and, you know, trying to do all the things that you do um, to stay healthy. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it took a lot of lives. Um, but I think, you know, some people came out of that with a, with, a, with a, a different way of thinking, saying, hey, I better prioritize my health or I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, well, well without, a, without a doubt, uh, physical fitness is definitely more important to people, even at the workplace. I, I, I read a really, a really insightful post on LinkedIn where someone was making a bold declaration that within the, within the next few years, it's going to be pretty much standard operating procedure that companies have gym time included in the daily regimen of their corporate lifestyle. And, you know, that, that, that has to be something that corporate has to look at and say, you know what, let's incentivize our employees. Let's make it so that a healthier, listen, a healthier employee, it means a healthier employee stays with us longer and is better and more productive because, yeah. you know, COVID's not going away. 
It's not, I mean, it, whether it comes back in another form, another name, another, but that cat's out of the bag. We're not going back to pre-COVID world. COVID, there's no way in the world a human being can be on this earth and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm untouchable. So you would think that that would mean, okay, what am I going to do about that? But this is where, you know, I, I come to someone like you and I say, all right, so you're on the front line of formulations at a major brand. Like you have so much, uh, you would have more influence over things that happen. And then you can actually say, hey, you had a part in it. What, what can average people do? Like if we mm -hmm. want to influence our school boards, if we want to get the garbage out of our local hospital, if, what you said is schools and hospitals should have the best food. That, that should almost be like an act of Congress, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if, if you, yeah, because that's, that's, there's, there's supposed to be harbingers of, of health. So like, you know, that, yeah, what do we do? What do we do to fix this? Um, the system's not, it doesn't incentivize health. So without that and the, the profits, you know, special interests and companies making money off, you know, bad food and, and, and corporate interests and, you know, people in Congress just doing what they do, you know, they're, a lot of them are career politicians. Does that mean they're concerned citizens and care about people in their in their districts? I don't know. I'm not around that. I don't know. All I can say is what, you know, I've been working in this industry a long time. I know products that I've formulated over the years or had a part in, you know, hopefully had a positive impact on people. Um, I've taught nutrition to people and I help people every day doing what I do. I'm hoping that little bit can make a difference as far as taking it to the next level. Yeah, I mean, if you can talk to your local congresswoman or man and, and, and figure out, you know, what influence you can have, there's just, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's that much of a demand because to be honest with you, I think people will always look for the easy way. You know, we're talking about making some difficult change. People don't like change. You know, I remember in New York City, they were trying to, to ban like large sodas in restaurants. <laughs> Which, you know, look, we live in the U.S. I think it was kind of a ridiculous effort to, it, I understood it from as a nutritionist, right? But, you know, you can literally walk out of the restaurant and go down the block to 7-Eleven and buy it. So that that was never going to work. And, and I think people should be free to, to do the things they want to do. But, you know, also their freedom is going to impact people who are actually taking care of themselves because at some point, those people become a burden to the healthcare system. They just do. Um, I'm talking about people whose issues might be lifestyle related. Obviously, people get sick of, to no fault of their own, should get all right. the care that they need. Um, for, but for those who can actually do something about it and don't, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's a tough conversation, right? But they, it's, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy, right? It's simple in your mind, you know, okay, I got to eat healthy. I got to try and exercise every day. Um, I got to sleep. I mean, I think sleep might be number one on the list because you can eat healthy and exercise. If you're not sleeping good, it basically negates all of those two, those two things. So there, there's some good work by Dr. Matthew Walker, who has a sleep research lab at UC Berkeley. He's done some Google talks. He wrote a book, Why We Sleep. And you would be blown away by the impact of even just, you know, a small reduction in sleep. If you say five or six hours instead of seven or eight, it has drastic effects on, on blood sugar, on hormones in your body and um, overeating and, and, and obesity and heart disease risk and cancer risk that people don't think of like, oh, okay, I don't need to sleep today. <laughs> I'll I catch up guy. on my sleep. That, I was that's, that that's, guy, that's, Brian. Another, that's another myth. You can't catch up on your sleep. <laughs> you're not going to, if you miss sleep during the week, Saturday, you're going to sleep 18 hours. It doesn't work that way. You lost right. that sleep forever and your body will feel it. And over time, it definitely does have an impact. So, you know, it, it, it's hard when you, when you get into the politics of it, but look, you know, we, we're one of the wealthiest countries of the world, but we still rank pretty low as far as overall health. And it's, it's sad because it's not that complicated. Like I said, it's, it's simple, it, it's simple, but it's not easy because it, it will take people to put an effort on their own. The government's going to have to make certain changes that might make people feel uncomfortable, but, you know, it's going to come to a point where, what do we got? We got over 30% of the population that fall into the obese category. It's not going to get better. Technology is making it worse. People becoming less active, not more active. Right. People always looking for a quick fix. You know, maybe this pill can fix me or I can have that surgery or that. You know, they don't want to put in the work that's necessary to be healthy. Um, and if they don't want to do that, it can't force them to. We live in a free country. 
And I think there's always, there's mostly positives. It's the greatest country in the world, but there's also negatives to that. And you, you brought up 9-11, right? We took our freedom for granted and, and safety. And all of a sudden that was taken away. And we're seeing over time as a, the health of this country continues to decline, that, that there are some challenges that come with the freedoms that we have, that people are not always gonna make the right choice. But, you know, we have to do everything we can to encourage people, you know, like you see a new person in the gym, you're not gonna start sitting there laughing at them because they're overweight, which is, I, I never understood why people would do that. That's right. why they're there, right? To get healthy. At some point, everyone wasn't healthy or starting out at some point, maybe not like them, um, but you encourage people, right? You don't, you don't discourage people. Um, I you think know, you, you make, you make such a good point about the gym and, and like being looked at. And one of the things that, uh, the high intensity interval training that I'm doing has helped me do is help me. You working so hard in that short period of time, you don't have time to notice anyone. You're just working mm -hmm. on yourself. You're going, you're just doing your work and you have 30 seconds on 10 seconds, rest 30 seconds on you're doing that for 45 minutes to an hour. You barely have enough time to even catch your breath. Yep. And there are no mirrors in this place. And so I realized that, you know, one of the things for me, one of my goals, Brian, is to get from going to this very, very structured environment to be able to just have a bunch of equipment in my gym, in my house, and then just train, you know, on my own and have the discipline to do that. And, you know, it, going to the gym is something that now I look forward to because I want to change the way I used to. I used to go to the gym, super self-conscious, super just inferiority complex, just super, you know, like a long way to go. I used to go with buddies and that was super awesome because I had the big guy, big, strong guys, you know, always pushing me and right, egging me on. That was, I was in the best shape of my life before now when I met my wife. And, and, and that speaks to something that I never connected it back then. But when I say I was in the best state of my life, best shape of my life, it was, I was in the best shape of my mental life then too, because I was going to the gym every day. At, uh, I was going to the gym every day at lunch with three to four guys and one of the guys, he's been running track since high school and he's, he, you know, he's still runs track. And he said, Uday, most people run, they'll run, they'll do cardio and then they'll do weights. We're going to do heavy weights. We're going to crush weights and then we're going to run. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and he, he pushed me, man. Like he pushed me. He's like, I don't care if you didn't run track, you're keeping up with me. Keep. And so when you have these guys that push you, mm -hmm. I mean, I, they, I, ca they carried me, bro. Like, you know, like I couldn't have done that without them pushing me. I got more weight on the, on the bench. All that stuff was because bigger, stronger guys were taking care of me. Mm -hmm. like when I had to take care of myself, I disappointed myself. But the lesson is, the lesson is, okay, I messed up first time. Now I'm fully accountable to myself. And going to the gym, not having mirrors taught me, just focus on yourself. Now if I go to a gym with a whole bunch of mirrors, I don't care. I don't see anybody except for my equipment, my set, my rep do it again. And then, and then I'm out. So, you know, you're right, man. No, the encouragement you get really changes everything. And, you know, being able to give that is, is huge. Yeah. Some people do very well in a group setting, like with classes, they, they, they feel a little bit motivated. Um, I never really relied on motivation. Like I said, I think it's my challenges with depression that sometimes I don't feel motivated, but I think it's more about discipline. You know, you're not always going to be, you can get motivated. A great song comes on, right. And then all of a sudden, that kind of fades away. <laughs> you oh, can't yeah. rely on motivation. You're not always going to feel motivated. I think, you know, the healthy lifestyle is, is more about discipline that you realize it's important. You realize the benefits, you're committed to it and, and you stick to it. And that that's all discipline. Cause you're going to, you're going to push yourself on days when you're not at all motivated. <laughs> Point where my entire day is built around when I go to the gym. So, yeah. and, and so that means I stay away from toxicity like, you know, th three hours before a gym, I'm not anywhere near. If I got to do a toxic call, it's like after the gym, I'm going to mm -hmm. be at my highest state, my most alert state of mind, which is after the gym, even though I'm tired, mm -hmm. this right here is so clear. I could do important things right after the gym. So I'm, it's a tool now, right? Like it's, it's literally me going to the gym is me sharpening my blade so I can do my professional work mm -hmm. and, and, and being able to like run a business and do your own it, it doesn't come without doubt and uncertainty. When I go to the gym, I'm training myself to deal with the doubt and the uncertainty. I see these are guarantees and it's just so transactional for me now. But when I was 20, 25, 30, you know, I think there's an immortality when you're in your twenties and, and, and you just fool yourself into thinking that you don't need to do things. I didn't sleep. 
I used to sleep yeah. barely like three, four hours. I just keep mm-hmm. moving, keep moving, keep moving. I used to do meeting after meeting after meeting. I do fly this, that, oh, I'm a road warrior, badge of honor. Like, but you know, none of that stuff was going to lead. I mean, if I did that for another few more years, Brian, it would be a totally different story because I would be irreversible. I think, I think I would have had irreversible consequences. And for sure. Uh, oh, when we're younger, who, you know, in 1920, <laughs> I'm not thinking about dying. <laughs> but, yeah, I tell my know, kids, I tell my kids that too. I say, I'm learning how to be an adult. So t- mm-hmm. look at me now and, and see me for my flaws and see me for my, for, and like, it's really powerful for my kids to tell me like, Hey, Bobby, we're, we're really proud of you. Like, yeah, they love me. They, I have my middle one is very defensive for me. She's like, you never were fat. You didn't need to go to the gym. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I love you. I know what you're doing. You're protecting <laughs> your dad, right? Like she's protecting her dad. She's yeah. saying, dad, you never were fat. And I'm like, yeah, I know I wasn't, but I, I wanted to strengthen my brain. I go to the gym to strengthen my brain. She's like, really? Mm-hmm. How do you do that? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. Like people think um, people who don't work out think that people that work out only work out to look a certain way. Like, oh, you have to have a six pack and big muscles and want to look good on the beach. You know, and God bless for people. Who, that's their goal. The bodybuilders. There's nothing wrong. That's hard work. That's discipline. For whatever reason you're doing it, it, it should be. You know, everyone has their own reason for working out and training and being healthy. If it's physical, that's fine. I mean, my, my motivation was more about the mental health. And of course, the physical part is a nice side effect of that. You sure. know, to, to be fit at, at my at 53 years old, when you know, I look around at most guys my age and even younger are kind of falling apart. And I'm in no, I'm by no stretch in super physical great shape. But I'm, I'm out there, I'm trying, I'm pushing myself. And I think the important thing is when you're, when you're training, you're putting your body on the, in a controlled stress environment, right? And I, and I tell people who don't train all the time, it's the best thing you can do if you have anxiety, stress issues, if you have a lot of stress going on, because in, in, a, in a workout, you're, you can control the amount of stress, right? So then when you get stressed out outside the gym, your body's kind of used to even going you're putting it under more stress than it'll ever happen where you're sitting in traffic. You're not going to really feel stressed out. Like I don't get stressed out. Meanwhile, you know, three days a week, I'm in jujitsu rolling around with 20 something year olds on the floor who are trying to choke me. And I'm remaining calm under those situations. When I leave there, what's going to bother me? Probably nothing. Unless somebody puts a gun to my head. Right. So, yeah. You know, no, when, that's when, powerful, when, man. No matter what training you're doing, you're yeah. training, you're, you're preparing your body for whatever. And, like, you know, it's so cute with your daughter. She recognized and she wanted to kind of encourage, she's encouraging you. And at that yeah. age, it's interesting, but you're setting a great example for your kids. They're like, you, they realize that that's important. Like you want to be healthy for them, for yourself too, of course, but you want to be able to take care of your family. And it tends to rub off on the kids too. You know, I mean, you can't, a parent can't tell a kid, oh, you know, you're overweight. You, you need to go exercise. And they're sitting on the couch eating ring dings and, and drinking beer that doesn't work it's like you can't tell a kid well you can't get a tattoo if you have seven of them sure. right i mean it, that that's just kids you know they do as they, they they do as they see and and if you're telling kids and you're doing the opposite they're not going to listen so you're setting a great example for them you know, one of the one of the things that i love about what you're doing with the martial arts is that you are challenging yourself against 20 year olds right i mean this is a very is a very aggressive martial arts um, style. What what what's that like, man? You ever you ever get into a situation where you're like, whoa, I'm in too deep? <laughs> no, I mean it's a controlled environment. But you know, and when you got you're rolling around with a bunch of white belts, and I'm I'm doing it less than a year, um, but it's something I got into. It was like, I just got bored of the same workouts, and I love martial arts, and I've always wanted to do jujitsu. But it's something that you can do if you're smart for well into your older age. I, I know guys in their 60s and 70s that are doing it. But yeah, you know, when you're, when, when you're on the ground with 20 something year old guy and he's faster, more fit, stronger than you, you gotta try and figure out like what, what's your advantage. And usually, you know, you call it old man strength. You're usually stronger than a lot of these younger guys, but they're fast and you know, they bounce back quick and their cardio is way better than mine. Even though I like, I like to consider myself semi-fit, um, you know, when you got a guy who wrestled in high school, you're not going to be able to keep up, but you don't have to. That's right. the thing. It's, it's you it's against really, you, right? In jujitsu, it's really you versus you. You know, there's no, 
well, you know, I can tap that guy out. He's a blue belt. That means I should be a blue belt. No, no, not necessarily. You, you, you're new. You'll get there. But it's just showing up every day. You're learning. It's really fun. Um, and you're putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. You know, it's not it's not fun to have your arm you get caught in an arm bar and the guy's looking to rip your arm off. But it's controlled. You, that's why you tap out. <laughs> or yeah, someone's yeah. trying to choke you out. Um, I just happen to really like it. <laughs> That's awesome. you know, some, pe some people would find that, you know, at 53 years old, uncomfortable. I like, un I like this comfort. Um, I used to run a bunch of Spartan races and get beat up doing that. That was fun. I always like to kind of challenge myself with new stuff, but this is hopefully something I can do for a long time to come. And it, it's a great, it's a great workout. It really is. That's great. Um, let me ask you something about supplements. You know, what, what are you, what are you taking uh, now that you're take you're doing jujitsu you know, what are you taking that perhaps you weren't taking before? Uh, or, you know, by, by based on the activities that you're doing, are you taking different supplements? So I've actually, I think I probably upped, I've upped supplements related to joint pain. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's, it's a different type of, it's a different type of training, right? I, sure. I used to do, and I still do kettlebells, but I used to do a lot more. I, I don't do the traditional like curl, chest, bicep, tricep workout. I do mostly functional fitness with kettlebells and um, I have an assault bike at home and I have an ab wheel. I used to train a lot more, but since I cut back on that, um, I would say more things like turmeric, higher doses of fish oil. Um, it, it really hasn't changed that much because most of the things I take are nutrients. Like I don't eat fish, so I want to make sure I'm getting omega threes. I like to keep my vitamin D level up pretty high. Um, so I make sure, you know, when I get my blood work, I make sure I'm taking the right amount because look, if you're really low in vitamin D, you could take two, three, four thousand units every day for months and it may not come up. You may need much higher amounts. That's why you mentioned earlier that it's important to get your blood test. And especially in the wintertime, you're not out in the sun. Um, you may need more of that. So I, I, I up it a little bit in the wintertime. Um, but and CBD has really been helpful for me. I've been using that. I up that a little bit since doing this kind of training. And you definitely I find I need more recovery time between jujitsu workouts than than weight workouts because you're using your whole body, right? You're getting thrown around and you're putting your body in uncomfortable situations. And I got injuries, torn labrums, rotator cuffs. I had back surgery. It, it is what it is. So you're fighting through that, but CBD is really helpful. I know it's helped me with my anxiety. I've been using it for a while now and it definitely helps with sleep a little bit. Um, so that's really it. Other than that, you know, a multivitamin, um, I'm not, big into like greens drinks i may do that once in a while i try to i'm not unfortunately a huge fan of eating vegetables I, even as a kid so i'll take a greens drink here and there magnesium is really important uh, i eat a lot of nuts and seeds as snacks so i get a lot i supplement with a little bit of extra um probably you know zinc vitamin c um that's really it i don't take a lot of stuff right. um, i think nutrients are important and i don't eat a lot so it's really hard for me to meet my nutrient requirements just through food. I can't eat five, six times a day. I just can't. And I can't get enough nutrients at three meals. It's, it's really hard to do. Um, I'm trying to maintain my weight. You know, it's challenging as you get a little bit older to do that. So I want to make sure I'm able to do that, you know, well into my 60s, 70s and beyond and maintain lean muscle. So you got to make sure you're getting enough protein, of course, that you can usually get through food, but I'll have usually at night. I'll have a protein shake um, in addition to that. Um, what else? It's, it's really about it, to be honest. And, and some NAC, which is really good for the lungs, especially now with, with sure. COVID. Same NAC um, that uh, there's a lot of talk about taking it out of formulas? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that was the issue. So it, it, <laughs> NAC is actually is also a drug. Um, and pharmaceutical okay. companies are saying that supplement we shouldn't be allowed to sell NAC, but it's been sold for decades. Right. Um, we still sell it at Vitamin Shop. I think Amazon pulled it and some other companies pulled it. The FDA hasn't said it. It's not illegal to sell. It's just that the pharmaceutical companies are claiming, and it is a drug. It's used for if someone ends up in the emergency room, if they overdose on Tylenol, it, it prevents liver damage. So they usually give it through an IV. It's also used in cystic fibrosis patients to break up mucus. It's a really good uh, mucolytic. So it thins out the mucus a little bit. And, and to me, it's really good for 
like any kind of inflammation in the lungs and it's a great antioxidant. This is um, N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine, yeah. It has a funky odor because anything that has a high concentration of sulfur, which comes right. from the cysteine, usually smells pretty funky. So yeah. when you first open the bottle, you're like, whoa, what's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah, it's like a smelling it's salt, salt, right? <laughs> it's like rotten egg smell. Um, but 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 it's it's kind of controversial right now. It's right. not illegal. We're still selling it. Um, but some well, this is something that's very interesting because like, see, Vitamin Shop is a brand that people respond to. Like if, I, if it's good enough for Vitamin Shop, it automatically has a, a, a label of authenticity or, or trust. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I personally, if I didn't know anything about this and you told me that it's available on the shelves of Vitamin Shop, I'd say that, you know what? They probably have experts that have already looked into it and it's OK for them. It's OK for yeah. me. I think that's one of the key roles that a vitamin shop and other stewards of the industry play. I think that's a really key role. And, you know, getting that information out like this, like person to person and, and within a small tribe, like tribe to tribe, um, it, 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 it does a lot to, to quell the misinformation because things get, things get hot real fast and then they just take off and people start putting their own spin on. It. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of trade organizations that are working, um, with Congress now um, to try and figure this out. I haven't heard, there haven't been any updates. I think it's just going to go away. Um, I don't, and people will start selling it again, but who knows? I mean, same thing with CBD. There's no clear FDA guidelines around the regulations yet. It kind of varies state to state, but we sell CBD. You know, you just, you shouldn't be making, yeah. you shouldn't be making disease claims for any supplement, never mind CBD. Um, it's safe. People are using it. Um, again, you, you got to make sure you're not do, overdoing it. Um, but, you know, it's something that people are interested in using and are benefiting from. It's just that, you know, the FDA's main concern is always safety. And I understand that. They want to make sure they, they get through enough. They, they see enough data and information to give them the make them comfortable with the safety profile. And they'll probably figure out how to work it out as like a food additive or something. But sure. eventually it'll, it'll, it'll be more widespread. It's pretty popular now. Um, so, you know, we'll see, but yeah, with vitamin shop, we, in all our stores, our health enthusiasts, that's what we call our store employees right. are well-trained. Um, I review all the training and education for the company and they're very knowledgeable. No one's going to push product on you. That's just right. not our approach. We're more about education, making sure people understand the importance of lifestyle first and then supplements and supplements can fit into almost any lifestyle. And we make sure we we tailor the right supplements for that person. We're not just blindly recommending a bunch of stuff that people don't need. Uh, that's not our approach. It's not just about pushing product. It's about educating people and helping them make the right decisions for their health. One of my favorite products, uh, one of my favorite new products on the shelves of Vitamin Shop is uh, Fit Butters. And it, it's, it's an interesting thing for me because I had to try to, I had to try to deal with, you know, me working out more made me hungrier. Like I was... <laughs> I had to figure out a way to fill that extra, like I wasn't going to just eat junk food. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I, I want to eat a lot more. And, and you know, I was, I'm, work, I'm at home. And I'm like, this thing could turn into a, a nightmare if I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and those fit butters really comes in handy, man. Like it's a nice snack. It's a, and then what do you, you like, you, you, are you a fan of fit butters or I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, I, but I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, I snack mostly on different, all different kinds of nuts, almonds, walnuts, okay. macadamia nuts. So, I love nuts. I don't really use the spreads though, but they're yeah. great. They, they sell very well. People love them. They're healthy. They're a great alternative to, I mean, there's nothing wrong with natural peanut butter, um, but yeah. you no, know, it's the, it's the variety, right? The different types of nuts that are in there have different nutrient profiles and you can, you can benefit from the different types of, of um, essential fats that are in there. There's a lot right. of good nutrients in there. I think these, you know, asking more questions of anybody that has an opinion I think we have, I'm teaching my kids how to ask more questions. I just had this lecture up to them on the way to the bus stop this morning because my oldest daughter was, was claiming she knew something. And I was like, come on, you didn't even ask a follow-up question. You got to ask follow-up questions. Everything's about follow-up questions, you know? And, and she's like, looking at me. She's like, oh, another lecture. I'm like, come on, please. You're nine and a half. You got to ask questions. The more questions you ask, the better you shot you got of getting an answer, you know? And um, so I can feel like- in a, in, a group, in a group setting. If I do some kind of presentation, you know, people are a little hesitant to ask questions, but once people start to ask and it opens up other questions and people start to step out of their comfort zone. But yeah, I mean, to me, I always grew up listening was to me the most important. I always 
I didn't talk a lot. I was always listening to adults and other people. And I think it paid off for me in the long run. I learned a lot from listening to, you know, nowadays these young people don't want to listen to us older folks. I always listened to older people, whatever it was, especially the older, older people who were really wise and, and had life experience. Now, I think that that's kind of gone. People just like push old people to the side. Right? Yeah, it's, it's so, no, it's you're so right, man. It's so important to listen to people and, and hear, you know, the experiences of what people have been through. And you learn a lot that way. You know, I, I appreciate you being so candid with me about even just even your age and just sharing like what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things about this that I believe, you know, like I said, I'm 43. I have a lot of friends that are in, they're still in the thirties and, you know, through my temple, um, I'm, I'm involved with like youth leadership type things. And so I see a lot of uh, opportunities to, to kind of guide youngsters with academics or just life, but more than anything else, I tell all of them, I'm like, I'm happier now than I was 10 years ago. And I'm better than I, it's just life is beautiful that way because you have the benefit of experience and then you have the opportunity to use that experience to then make better life decisions. And so you saying you're 53, it really sets into motion for me, a visible target. So mm -hmm. I, like what, if I think I'm, if I think I'm impressed with myself now, I need to make sure that when I'm 53, that I'm as impressed with myself as I am with you doing jujitsu. So you've set the bar high. Like, I, I, you know, I think that's important. I think we all need to have people that are setting the bar high enough that even if I fail to hit that bar, I'm still better off. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I may not be doing jujitsu at 53, but I sure as hell better be doing something. That, Aim that, high. Like... <laughs> but, yeah, I, know, mean, I think I, it's important. I don't think people, um, you know, when we're kids, we challenge ourselves. We do different. We do a lot of new things, right? We're learning things. I think as adults, we lose that. I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's important to try new things, something that'll challenge you, something that you really think at, right? I mean, and, and try and get good at it. Um, I, I, I think it's important. I really do. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I took that up. But um, that, that's across the board for anyone. Look, change is hard. New things are difficult. But why not try it? Like, what do you have to lose? Yeah. What's the worst thing that can happen? I can get choked and put to sleep. All right. So I'll wake back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <absolutely>. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you said, the control, the control stress, you know, I, I never, I never put that together until you mentioned it. Um, little things like in traffic, I'm not in traffic as much anymore because I work from home, but mm -hmm. when I am in traffic, I am actually very content. Either I'm listening to a podcast, listening to music, listening to my kids, but I'm, I'm very content getting to my destination when I get to it. I, I'm, I'm so not, I was so not like that my entire life. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of people are very high strung and get stressed out over, oh, my coffee's cold. Or I think a lot of those people are not people who typically train every day from, from the ones that I know that are very like hyper aggressive. And, you know, you, if someone cuts you off, you're ready to chase them down the highway and get into a fight over it where you know, most of us who put ourselves under that controlled stress or, pretty laid back. You're like, I'm, I'm not going there. It's, what's the point? All right. Introduce this product at supply side. It's still in a, in a prototype type of position. I haven't commercially sold it. I've got samples. I give them to people. It's, it's, it's a Belgian chocolate. It's a functional chocolate. It's got Geronol, Geronol in it. And, and one of the reasons I did this was because I really fell in love with this ingredient while I was trying to pitch it. And, you know, I, I've got the support of American river to try to introduce a functional chocolate or if, if not that, eventually it's going to be more likely to be in a soft gel or, or a capsule. But while I'm getting, while I'm telling the story, it's a lot easier to get an audience if I'm offering chocolate than if I'm offering a capsule. So, <laughs> sure. you know, yeah. So it's a little bit of marketing in there, but it's Belgian chocolate. So it's really good quality chocolate. But the reason um, I want to bring it up is because one of the incidental side effects of this and side effects or byproducts of it is it does spur testosterone production. Now I've, I, I've got a, I'm going to be, I've been taking 75 milligrams of this every day for the last three and a half weeks. And I know that I'm working out a little bit better. I know that there's definitely, um, I've definitely got an increased libido. Like it, there's definitely, uh, that, there's definitely, I mean, I, I can feel that there's something different. Um, now I need to prove it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off of it. And then I'm going to get a baseline testosterone test so I can get my baseline levels. 
and then I'm going to start it up again. And I'm just going to, and I, I've done this with a few other people just to kind of get some preliminary data. But again, I'm new to this space. And, and for me, I'm curious when I say to you, all right, I'm in my early forties and I say testosterone, what, what do you say? I think it's important, obviously. Um, I think um, the, the subject of testosterone replacement therapy is not discussed enough amongst men, especially guys my age. I know some people who do take a replacement. It's important. If your levels are low, it puts you at risk. You're going to lose muscle mass. You're going to be depressed. Um, it, it can increase your risk for a lot of different chronic diseases. You know, just like a woman gets, you know, um, estrogen replacement. It, depending on you know risk factors, um, men should be looking at it too, and doctors should be willing to work with men. But again, testosterone replacement is inexpensive. There's not a lot of money to be made there. Um, I know guys who have gotten off antidepressants, have reversed their type two diabetes, reversed their depression, all kinds of things by just getting their testosterone levels up to a, you know, I, I don't know what we call the, the range of what they call normal. Um, may not be. It could vary for each person or for a different laboratory. But I think it's important to work with a doctor who understands hormones, like an endocrinologist, um, not just somebody who's, you know, you got guys in the gym shooting up testosterone at a 25 years old, just to get jacked in an uncontrolled environment. I think it's dangerous in a controlled setting where you're getting regular blood work, you're getting your levels checked. Um, I absolutely think it's an important subject and something that's often overlooked. And unfortunately, uh, men suffer because they, they don't hear about it. They don't know about it. They don't realize how important it is, but it's, it can make a huge difference in how somebody feels. Yeah. That, and just going down that rabbit hole of all the things that journal, journal effects, when I started reading more about testosterone, I realized how little I really knew about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, we, we think we know about it just because we say it like mm -hmm. testosterone. Okay. I know everything I need to know about it, but I knew nothing. I knew well, really you know, nothing. Healthy, healthy eating, working out, lifting weights, yeah. sleeping, could all impact testosterone in a positive way. But if you have all those things in place and you're level and you're still not feeling great, um, you may want to get it checked and you know, maybe consider doing testosterone replacement uh, under a physician supervision, not on your own where you just kind of, it's like a crapshoot. It, it can become very dangerous. Yeah. Personalized nutrition. We see that, 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 that area is, is, is getting more attention and, you know, I, I went to a, a conference in California during the summer and I spoke to a company that's based out of Utah that does indiv individual testing. Uh, I forgot mm -hmm. the name of that te test lab. They actually, as, as part of this uh, conference, they had sent out complimentary vitamin D tests and I had gotten my vitamin D tested. Um, and it turned out that I had gotten it tested six months before and it was deficient and then I had supplemented it and then I got it tested again. It was, it was good. So I was like, Hey, that's awesome, man. I love the fact that this worked, but they're telling me that, you know, within the next couple of years, they're going to have the technology to be able to dispense testing where with like one, with one um, administration of blood work, they'd be able to do multiple baseline testing. And, and at, at, as I'm sitting there, I'm listening to this guy. I'm like, this is definitely the future because, mm -hmm. you know, for guys like us, who want to take ownership and accountability over our health. I don't really want to get stuck into the medical system. I don't want to be going to that. Like if I go get blood work done through my doctor, I get like an $800 bill. You know, it's, I mean, I have bad insurance too. So, but, but the point is, you know, it, that shouldn't be the case. you right. If, if, if I'm trying to be proactive about my health, I should be encouraged to do that. And this guy's talking about commercially testing like that being available. So average guys, average people can just go get personalized testing baseline levels and kind of figure out what we got to do. Yeah. I think there's a lot testing, of testing technology has come a long way with certain types of testing, blood tests. Um, but I think also, you know, what do you do with the data? Like, what does the information mean? Is there some, is that information, um, has anything been published in the literature where it's peer reviewed, where people are looking at, but there's a relationship between low levels of this or high levels of that, you know, to just get a blood test that's looking at certain numbers. If, if you can't use it for anything or if it doesn't mean anything and there's really no science to support it, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. But I think um, some companies are really, they're, they're collecting a lot of data over time with different people and, and they're getting the information and hopefully they'll, they'll stop publishing things where it says, hey, if you know, we've noticed in this population of 
thirty thousand men, you know, and it still is not, it's not a, a cause and effect relationship. But you know, like vitamin D, if you have low levels, you might be at risk for A, B, and C disease. And same thing with more advanced testing. You know, they might find some relationship between low levels of this, high levels of that, with X, Y, and Z disease. So that then it's helpful. But to just randomly get a test that looks great, sounds great. But there's no, no like nothing you can do clinically that's useful. Then I think you're just throwing your money in the garbage because what, what are you really getting at it other than the report looks great, the numbers are great. What does it mean, right? right. And if you have no science to to really support um, the connection between anything health related, I don't know. Not a big fan of that. Yeah, that's where I think that a company like that, individual testing companies, they're probably going to probably be uh, coveted by. Uh, medical practitioner companies that that mm -hmm. you know have the actual infrastructure and the medical clinicians to 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 actually the results come with a phone call and says hey I want to talk to you about your results yeah. and um, I can imagine that that could probably be really useful um, and I, and I think to some extent that already exists but um, just the idea of being able to avoid the medical offices that's something that with COVID I had to go get COVID tested at you know, the local uh, urgent care and they just, you're in and you're out. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't want to go, I don't want to go anywhere near a doctor's office, man. Like, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll go for a physical and I want in and then I want out. Um, if I can get my testing done without like, you know, having to ever leave my house, it gets mailed to me. I prick my finger, put it in the post. Um, it, Convenience I, I feel... is key for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody, nobody likes to go. Yeah. I mean, in general, I don't think people should re be relying on their doctor to keep them healthy. I That's agree. It's really not their goal. If you have a health issue, you should see a physician and figure out, you know, how you're going to address it. And, you know, there might be times where medication, I'm not against medication, might be necessary, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think lifestyle changes are always first, should be, but that might be in conjunction with the right medication, hormones, whatever it might be. That's important. But, you know, thinking your doctor's goal is to make you healthy, it's just not the right, not a pro. It's not going to happen. It's just not the way it is. They're, they're there to advise you on certain um, aspects of, of health, but it's not to keep you healthy. That's your job. And you got to make the effort to do all the things you need to do. And then if you get sick, sure, of course, you can see a doctor. And if you need medication, that's fine too. But a lot, most of the things that we see are preventable through a healthy lifestyle. From the industry right now, like if you look at what what just doesn't work, is there anything that comes to mind that says like, you know what, like this is, how is this still around? How is this product <laughs> still got legs? It just doesn't well, do it. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in if somebody thinks something's working, who am I to argue with that? Uh, placebo effect is very powerful. I think there's quite a bit of, of research to show that there are benefits to a lot of supplements. So. It's not who am I to say, you know, this shouldn't be sold because it doesn't work. But, the, you know, there are some people buying it. They feel like they're getting some benefit from it. Look, a lot of things are difficult to measure the benefit of. If something, if someone feels like they get more energy from product A, um, I can't argue with that, right? <laughs> Especially yeah, if they've been taking right. it long term. And if they stop it, they don't feel the same. You know, it's not really for me to say, you know, which product doesn't belong in the space. Um, I, you know, there are some things I think too much caffeine, you can always overdo things, you know, these energy drinks, I think you got to really be careful with, you know, you can overdo nutrients, you know, you take too much calcium, if, if you're not taking enough vitamin K, that's not good, because vitamin K2 particularly helps make ensure that calcium gets shuttled out of the arteries and into the bone tissue. So if you overdo vitamin D and calcium, without balancing vitamin K2, that could cause a problem. And if you get tend to get kidney stones where calcium combines with oxalate, which oxalate containing foods like green leafy vegetables and other things, you can Google that. Um, you might be at risk for kidney stones if you overdo calcium. So you can always overdo a good thing. You know, it's not really for me to say, you know, this supplement is a complete waste of money. Um, I just think you got to be smart. You know, you don't need to take everything, take what you think you need. Always start with nutrients first and then Fill it, you know, if you have some 
joint problems, if you want to add in like these glucosamine supplements and things related to that, to try them, give them a fair try. Um, things like CBD, if you're stressed out or you don't sleep that great, give it an honest try. A lot of people try supplements and, you know, they take it for a few days, they feel nothing. It's not a drug. <laughs> if you have a headache, you, if you're low in magnesium, it might take a couple of weeks for your magnesium levels to come up where it may help, right? If your body's, if you're working out and you're depleting nutrients, it takes time to replenish that. You may not notice a benefit. You're certainly not going to notice a benefit in a couple of days. And some people tend to, you know, it's the same thing with, with medications. People are just not compliant. They don't take their medication. I know I went through it with my father as he got old. He was skipping medications. His blood pressure would go up and his kidneys, the issues with his kidneys end up in the emergency room because he was dehydrated one thing after the other, right? So compliance is an issue with medication and it's certainly an issue with supplements. You don't want, you know, if, you, if you're encouraging people to supplement with things they actually need, you also don't want to burden them with too much stuff and then they take nothing. Right. You know, if they're, if they're strict about taking nutrients, I said nutrients first, a good multivitamin, some extra magnesium, make sure you're getting all the minerals, iron, vitamin, you know, zinc, selenium, copper, all those things that, kind of work together in the body. You don't want to take too much of one thing. Too much zinc can throw off your copper uh, balance. So it's all important, but nutrients first and then supplement with other things afterwards as needed. Hey, you you deal so close, you work so closely with the health enthusiasts, with the training, you know, with everyone saying that direct to consumer is the new wave and, you know, brick and mortar stores, they're, they're you know, you, you see these pictures of these malls that are empty. But I mean, I see, I see vitamin shop. There's a vitamin shop walking distance from my house. Plenty of people right there. It's, there's an LA fitness LA. Yeah. There's an LA fitness right behind yeah. it. I mean, they, it's great location and they're all located great near, right near a gym. Mm -hmm. um, I see there's plenty of traffic there. You know, what, what do you, what do you think about the brick and mortar, you know, future, you know, what, what's, what's the, what's the outlook look like to you? So I think that's coming back around. I remember back in the day, the old mom and pop health food store where you go in and, you know, the people who work there knew you and they knew your family. I think people are kind of looking for that again, that more personalized service. Um, I think that's kind of missing. I know at Vitamin Shop, sure, you know, we've seen increases on on, on, on our on web sales. Um, and maybe sometimes you get less foot traffic, you know, during COVID. But I think that's coming back around because I think people like that. They miss that contact. And I know the people that shop in our stores look forward to talking to our health enthusiasts because they may read something on the internet and they know that they're going to get good advice. And look, it may be they want to buy a supplement, but the health enthusiast knows enough to say, hey, based on what you're telling me, you probably shouldn't take that. Maybe you should take this. So, you know, getting through the misinformation, and I think we're seeing a lot more of that. So I think that that concept of, you know, going into the store, talking to someone is making its way back. I really believe that. I think people miss that contact. Um, and, and I think we'll see that continue to increase in our stores. Um, and I think it's, it, it really has to do with the people that work in our stores. They're well-trained, they're knowledgeable, they're not pushing people to buy product. They're helping educate people so that they can make the right decisions for themselves. And we're kind of there to just kind of guide them along. But um, I got to actually jump on another call. Hey, Brian, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward yeah, to doing this, this for a while. Um, awesome. I got to tell you, I appreciate all your all your your content. Like when you put yourself out there the way you do, um, you really helped me in, 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 in vocalizing what I was trying to do and what I am continuing to try to do. So thanks for being a great role model. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. That's great. You, you and I go back a long time. Yeah, man. And I, I want to wish you much success in your new venture, anything I can do to kind of support that. But, you know, we're all we're all here doing our thing. And the goal yeah. is to really to help people, you know, change their lifestyle, get healthy and, and just enjoy life more because they'll feel better. That's the I appreciate point. you. All right. All well, right I'll be buddy. in touch. We'll talk soon. All right, buddy. Take care. Have a great day. Be well. Bye bye. Bye.